Dear students, Assalamu alaikum. In this lecture video, we will discuss pulsed Fourier transformation technique in nuclear magnetic resonance. In this, the topic includes spin relaxation, magnetization vector, radio frequency pulse and its different types, free induction decay which is also called FID and Fourier transformation which is FT. So we will discuss all these topics one by one. So the first one we will discuss what is spin relaxation and then we will move further. So during the process nuclei in higher energy spin state that is beta spin state returns to the lower energy spin states by losing the excess energy to some magnetic vector present in the surrounding which is called as relaxation. There are two ways in which this radiation-less phenomena occurs. The first one is the spin lattice relaxation. In this relaxation, the energy is transferred to the framework of different molecules present in the surrounding. But in this case, the energy is transferred to the components of the lattice as an additional translational vibrational or rotational energy. So the nuclei returns to the lower energy state by taking time which is denoted with T1. In spin-spin relaxation which is the second type of relaxation the mutual exchange of energy takes place between two nuclei processing in different spin states with same frequency which are close proximity to each other so in this case one nucleus loses energy and the other nucleus gain energy so there is no net change in population of the two spin states which is known as Boltzmann distribution. If we consider a diagram or figure so here we are going to represent spin-spin relaxation in which the Nuclei with high energy spin state, when it relaxes to the low energy spin state, uh, it excites the nuclei which are, pro which are close proximity to this nuclei. So it excites this nuclei to the higher energy spin state and this is called spin-spin relaxation. Now we will discuss what is magnetization. When spinning nuclei are placed in an applied magnetic field, they start processing around the axis of the applied magnetic field which results in magnetization vector usually along the z-axis. The magnitude of this m corresponds to the nuclei in the lower energy spin state which is alpha spin state. This Terminology is known as Boltzmann axis of the nuclei. So Boltzmann axis in the alpha spin state or lower energy spin state, they along, they direct or they arrange themselves along the axis of the external magnetic field and start processing around the axis. When RF pulse a radio frequency pulse P is applied. It causes the magnetic vector to bend in a direction which is perpendicular to the pulse direction determined by the right hand rule. Here we are going to represent that here is the axis of the external magnetic field which is applied on the nuclei which is spinning here so the, <coughs> the nuclei with alpha spin state, the nucleus with alpha spin state start, first it will arrange themselves according to the external magnetic field and start precessing in this axis. So here is the precisional frequency of this nuclei and here is the axis of that nuclei which is tilted and it start processing around this axis which is 
the external magnetic field. So this, the axis of this rotation is called as magnetization vector M. Now this magnetization vector is present along the Z axis. When radio frequency pulse is applied, the radio frequency radiation is applied in microseconds. That's why it is known as pulse. So when this pulse is applied, which is perpendicular to the Z axis, so usually we apply pulse on the X axis. So pulse is applied on the X axis. The magnetization vector start bending towards the Y axis because of the right hand rule if our thumb of the right hand rule represents the direction of the pulse radio frequency pulse then the fingers which are which are on the z-axis they start bending towards the y-axis so they will start bending like this so finger represents the bending of this magnetization vector towards y-axis and the direction of pulse is along the x-axis. In this way, when pulse is applied, the bending angle, the bending of the angle is represented by theta. So the bending angle of this magnetization vector is represented with theta. As the angle increases the magnitude of m magnetization vector also increases by m sine theta along the y axis and m sine theta is maximum when the angle theta is equal to 90 degree because m sine theta sine theta at 90 degrees is maximum so the duration of pulse is adjusted up to few microseconds to obtain the flipping of the magnetization vector along y-axis at 90 degree angle which is called as 90 degree x pulse. This 90 degree x pulse means the pulse which produces flipping of the nuclei to at 90 degree angle and this pulse is along the x-axis that's why it is written as 90 x pulse. The pulse may be halved to tip the magnetic vector at 45 degree angle and that kind of pulse is called 45 x pulse or maybe twice to obtain the 180 degree pulse which is also known as pi pulse where it completely inverted on minus z axis. It causes the excess of nuclei in beta spin state so no signal will be obtained so here we represented with different diagrams that this magnetization vector when start bending towards this direction on the y-axis when the angle theta is 45 degree the pulse which only tilt this magnetization vector only at 45 degree the pulse is known as 45 degree RF pulse radio frequency pulse and if the pulse produces 90 degree angle of this magnetization vector this is known as 90 degree x pulse and if the pulse is applied which produces the 180 degree angle now theta is 180 degree and the magnetization vector is completely from alpha to beta spin state and it is now at minus z axis so this is the 180 degree pulse or it is known as pi pulse <coughs> radio frequency pulse power the intensity of the signal m starts increasing when angle is started increasing up to 90 degree and then started decreasing and again become zero when the angle is 180 degree because m sine 180 degree it will become zero and continue when if more pulse is applied then it will continue to the negative signal and again zero at 360 degree 
so it will be like this this graph represents rf pulse power a radio frequency power of the pulse here we represented that the magnetization vector is zero when angle when spin, uh, flipping of the nuclei starts because of the radio frequency pulse when the radio frequency pulse is 90 degree it the magnetization vector will be maximum which represents by this positive value and when it's it becomes 180 degree it it again becomes zero and this rf pulse if continued then it will start in the minus direction here we represented that it is the minus direction and it will continue and it will be minimum at 270 degree and again start increasing and become zero at 360 degree and after this it will at 360 degree it will be it will become again at its original position which, which is alpha state so in this case it will continue and this type of curve is known as sinusoidal curve sinusoidal curve as it is difficult to obtain 90 degree x pulse that we don't know that at what microsecond the 90 degree x pulse will be produced so first we take 180 degree x pulse which will give us the intensity at zero and then we take half of it to obtain the maximum intensity at 90 degree pulse now we will discuss free induction decay or FID which is also related to the spin relaxation that we discussed in this video before this magnetization that spin relaxation occurs so immediately after the pulse is switched off the relaxation process begins with the emission of energy and magnetization vector m returns to its original position but this return occurs towards the x-axis instead of z-axis when it start it when it returns it will move towards the x-axis instead of the z-axis the in intensity of the signal start decreasing and it reaches zero after some time it move further towards the minus y-axis along sinusoidal curve during relaxation process and angle changes in the same way as we discussed here when the intensity or when the rf pulse is applied so again it will it will make a sinusoidal curve when relaxation will occur but at this time the magnetization vector will bend towards the x-axis from y-axis to x-axis and then minus y and in this way now this is called as free induction decay after some time the intensity decreases and becomes zero so here we are going to represent the same sinusoidal curve but this time this is the relaxation curve this is sinusoidal decay and when the intensity is switched off when the rf pulse is switched off the, these nuclei will start processing and uh, their magnetization vector will start rotating towards the x-axis and it will move at here it will be at at 90 degree and then at 180 degree and it will again goes to the minus x a minus y direction and then at y again it at this point it will be at 360 degree and then it continues and after some time this sinusoidal curve is going to decrease because of the intensity is starting decreasing and then a time will come when it reaches to zero and now this curve is stopped so this is the relaxation time after the pulse is switched off the relaxation it will take some time to become zero so this sinusoidal curve become zero now Fourier transformation after acquiring FID signal 
FID signals are free induction decay signals and this type of graph or this type of data will be obtained during the uh, relaxation of the nuclear spin and this data is digitalized by analog to digital converter and stored in the form of Fourier transformation. So Fourier transformation is performed by computer. It converts sinusoidal curve from of spectrum that is it, it converts sinusoidal form of spectrum which is intensity as a function of time into peaks spectrum which is intensity as a function of frequency the sinusoidal curve is the the function of intensity with time whereas the FT Fourier transformation is the intensity as a function of frequency so the spectrum is emission spectrum so here it is not time so now we are going to represent with diagram here we have time which is the relaxation time spin relaxation time and here this shows intensity and this is zero and plus and here is the minus so this sinusoidal curve start decreasing and a time will come when it reaches to zero and this sinusoidal curve is obtained during the processing of the nuclei but after this we interpret this sinusoidal curve in the form of frequency by different uh, softwares like we use computer so the again here is the intensity signal but here it is now frequency so these this sinusoidal curve will be in the form of peaks so here we get the intensity as a function of the frequency and this is called as Fourier transformation which gives us sinusoidal curve in the form of peak so this is our today lecture after this we will study carbon 13 NMR and then we will discuss 2D NMR in our next lectures so thanks for watching this video